And so you've got to understand something that God has a monopoly of our praise. Amen. God has a monopoly on our praise. What, what, what do you mean, preacher? God has the right to all of our praise. God doesn't have a right to some of your praise. God doesn't have a right to a partial, uh, a partial bit of your praise. But God has a right to all of your praise. Isn't it something that we're going to the Dodgers game tomorrow? Some of, some of us are going to the Dodgers game tomorrow. And when you get to the Dodgers game, if they hit a home run, I'm here to tell you that the lights are going to be flashing and that folks are going to be jumping up and down out the chairs. They're going to be shouting. They're going to be clapping. They're going to be high-fiving. They're going to be back-flipping. And they're going to be doing all kinds of stuff. Won't you know that if you go down to the Chargers game or the Rams game, that folks go out there to pregame before the game. They go out into tailgate. They have drinks. They have barbecue. You, they're celebrating, they're joyful, they're excited, and then when the Rams start, score a touchdown or the, uh, or the Chargers score a touchdown, folks are excited about it. But it is something that when folk tell you to praise the Lord, that some folks can just sit there like they're just not even talking to them. When folks tell you that God is good, they can sit there and look at you. When folks tell you, oh, bless his name, you can sit there, oh, I'm too tired. But I'm here to tell you today that God ought not get less praise than your favorite sports team. God ought not get more praise than your favorite TV show. God deserves all of your praise. And so when somebody says, bless the Lord, you ought to be running and shouting. When somebody says praise the Lord something ought to happen on the inside of you because you can remember just how good God has been to us 